you do with a general when he stops being a general? Well, what can you do with a general who retires? Who's got a job for a general when he stops being a general? They all get a job for the general, no one hires. Nobody thinks of assigning him when they stop whining and dining him. It seems this country never has enjoyed so many one and two and three and four star generals unemployed. Hi, my name is Benjamin Sears. Welcome to Views from the Other Side. Today, I'm interviewing the British General himself, Thomas Gage. You might notice General Gage and I look a lot alike. I'm not sure if we're related or not, but there is definitely a resemblance. For those of you who are not familiar with General Gage, he was the British commander for North America during the beginning of the American Revolution. Isn't that right, General Gage? Yes, that's correct. I was in charge of the British troops in North America during the uprising of the colonists. Oh, that's right. You were in America during the uprising, but got sent back to England before the revolution ended. Uh, yeah, but I can explain. It really wasn't my fault. I was only doing what I was told to do by the British leaders in England. I told them we would need more troops, but they wouldn't listen. They thought there was just a small group of rebels. They didn't realize it was all of the colonists that were upset. So when did you begin to suspect the colonists might revolt? It all started with the Stamp Act. I knew they were really upset about the taxes. Many colonial merchants boycotted British goods. Preachers spoke up against us in church. A mob completely wrecked my home. They burned the British tax stamps. They hung a straw dummy dressed like a stamp distributor from a tree. They even stripped royal officers naked, then covered them with hot tar and feathers. But I felt like, along with most of England, that the colonists should be paying taxes. After all, we had troops in America protecting them from the Indians. In fact, George Washington and I fought together for England during the French and Indian War. I was told to send troops into Boston where much of the rebellion was going on and attempt to show force and keep peace. I never expected anyone to be hurt. But an angry mob of Americans began taunting them. They threw rocks and icy snowballs at my soldiers. One got hit with a lump of wood and knocked him down. What were they supposed to do? Just stand there and get killed? They fired into the crowd only to settle them down. Unfortunately, five colonists were killed that day, and it began being referred to as the Boston Massacre. It stirred up a lot of anger on both sides. After the Boston Massacre, I asked for a two-year leave and returned to England. What happened while you were in England? The angry colonists, led by the Sons of Liberty, threw a tea party. Literally. They were so fed up with taxes, they made their point by throwing thousands of pounds worth of tea into the Boston Harbor. What was the reaction to the Boston Tea Party? England reacted by creating the Intolerable Acts. I worked with the British government to help write them. We figured putting some rules on those despicable rebels would keep them under control. Like I said, America was a mere bully from one end to the other, and the Bostonians by far the greatest bully. What intolerable acts did you help with? I helped with the writing of the Boston Port Act that closed the Boston port until the colonists repaid the East Indian Tea Company for the tea they dumped overboard. I also helped write the Quartering Act, which gave the British troops permission to live in the colonists' homes. That sure taught them a lesson. I also suggested that town meetings be abolished. The colonists were using these to create democracy and plan the revolt. 
town meetings were left to continue, but the amount of meetings were cut back. Soon after the acts were completed, I went back to America to replace the current governor of Massachusetts, Thomas Hutchinson, and help enforce the intolerable acts. So what happened once you returned to America? Two things happened. One, England ordered me to use more force with the colonists, including the rounding up of two of the Sons of Liberty leaders, John Hancock and Samuel Adams. Second, I had heard rumors of the colonists stockpiling weapons in Concord, Massachusetts. So, on the night of April 18th, I ordered troops into Lexington to capture Hancock and Adams, and then onto Concord to destroy the arsenal. I was doing this in hopes of minimizing future bloodshed. Instead, just the opposite happened. The colonists were warned by Paul Revere and William Dawes that we were coming. This resulted in a battle between the colonists and my troops, now known as the Battle of Lexington and Concord. The colonists killed 273 British soldiers and 93 colonists died during the battle. How did Paul Revere and William Dawes know you were coming? They were told by Dr. Joseph Warren. How Joseph Warren found out, I'm not sure. Aren't there rumors that your American wife, Margaret, tipped off Dr. Warren? Do you think that's true? Yes, those are rumors. I don't know if she did or didn't. It could have been a lot of different people who told Dr. Warren. I did send her back to England soon after the Battle of Lexington and Concord, just in case. Why did you get sent back to England? It was after the Battle of Bunker Hill. We had camped out on Breed's Hill, but to our surprise when we woke up, we were surrounded by Patriots. Although we were greater in number and actually won the battle, we had over a thousand soldiers who died or were injured. England held me accountable for the loss of soldiers and cost of the battle, so I was removed from my position and replaced with William Howe. If England would have listened to me, we might have won the American Revolution. I warned them that these people show a spirit as great as ever people were possessed of, and that you must proceed in earnest or give the business up. The colonist spirit was so strong that they were able to defeat the greatest army of that time. Thank you, Thomas Gage, for sharing your view of the American Revolution with us today. This is Ben Sayer saying, see you next time on Views from the Other Side. God bless America. What can you do with a general when he stops being a general? They hung a straw dash mock. Somebody's got the giggles. <laughs> he knew it was coming up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, serious game face. Go Britain, go Britain, it's your birthday, it's your birthday. Go Britain, go Britain, it's your birthday, it's your birthday. go hunting for some webbles. The colonist spirit was so strong that they were able to destroy the greatest army at Booker Booker Britain Britain Booker Booker Britain Britain You be British you'd be British when I'm done with you We are the losers of the war but we will keep on fighting till the end we are the champions my friends and we will keep on fighting till the end we are the 
champions. No time for losers. We are the champions. No time for losers of the world. Cause you know I'm all about those rebels, about those rebels. No British, I'm all about those rebels, about those rebels. No British, I'm all about those rebels, about those rebels. No British, I'm all about those rebels. <laughs> Cause we're America, clap along if you don't like taxation without representation. Cause we're America, clap along if you love free. Cause we're America, clap along if you like the right to the oath. Another right that we have is the right of speech and to sing.